So welcome to the three-part webinar series, Expand Your Digital Knowledge with Three Shape Trios. It is being presented by Kelly Bevington, RDA, EFDA, and Brenda Kirkins, CDA, RDA. Today is part one, Introduction to Three Shape Trios, Back to Basics, and we are going to begin the webinar shortly. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce tonight's speakers. First up is Kelly Bevington, RDA, EFDA, Director of iOS Technology here at NDX. She began her career more than 20 years ago as an RDA, EFDA, graduating from Bryman College. Kelly has a comprehensive knowledge of dentistry and the dental laboratory industry. She has been professionally trained on most major devices, and Kelly is able to provide expert chairside coaching. She manages the NDX clinical iOS training team and has clinically trained over a thousand dentists and their teams. Kelly enjoys sharing her knowledge by presenting webinars and is a regular contributor to dental publications. And we also have Brenda Kirkin, CDA, RDA, iOS clinical training specialist here at NDX. Brenda has served in dentistry for more than 25 years. She's a certified dental assistant and a registered dental assistant and has served as an adjunct instructor at the University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry. Brenda has extensively trained in such areas as impression techniques, iOS and PBS, retraction cord placement, provisionals, and photography. And with that, it, it is my pleasure to say, take it away, ladies. Thanks so much, Jessica. Appreciate the kind words and the introductions. Me. So we are talking about um, introduction to trios tonight and just a little additional housekeeping. Get it going. Uh, one thing is a, a personal disclosure that both Brenda and I are actual employees of NDX presenting this. So, And uh, just to sort of recap what the presentation is designed and so this course is specifically for first-time TRIO users. We're going to uh, run through some basics of getting the, the site ready to scan, the preparation ready to scan in regards to isolation and tissue management. And then Brenda's going to be demonstrating how to uh, scan a single unit crown and uh, review the steps to do that. Um, as far as uh, the tools of trimming, analyzing, and shade management. So this is our clinical training team. We've got myself, I'm predominantly East Coast, Brittany Carey covers the West, and then Brenda is in the Midwest. We are all um, professionally trained dental professionals, uh, uh, clinical people, versus salespeople coming in and trying to sell you a scanner. That's that's not what we do. We're there to really help you chair side with your patient care and coach you and your auxiliaries on how to acquire the most optimal scan. And so people will often ask, what, what are the reasons why I should go digital if you don't already have a scanner? And so what, what we've experienced from a lab's perspective is it really improves the accuracy of your impression. Um, and in improving that accuracy, it's reducing remakes. And that's how we sort of measure the accuracy part from the lab is um, if we're not receiving requests for remakes, that to us is an indication that the crowns are fitting better. Uh, what we hear from our dentist customers is it really elevates the the patient experience. And the patients are generally really wowed by the technology that they're experiencing in your practice. Um, of course, once you become proficient at scanning, it's going to reduce how many physical analog impressions you take. And in doing so, that will reduce your overhead cost of the impression material. And uh, when all that uh, sort of jives together, that's going to really maximize your chair time and uh, allow you to do the impression uh, procedure, the prep procedure, a little faster. I'm going to quickly check the chat. I think that's Jessica, but yeah, great. So 
So there is a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to scanning. And I specifically want to address this tonight because it's for new users. And I never like people to feel badly about themselves if they aren't picking it up quickly. Many people have wonderful hand-eye screen coordination. Um, some of the younger folks in the audience um, may have grown up with hand-eye screen coordination, with different video games and so forth. I was not one of those people. I know when I very first started to scan, I, I was questioning whether I had made the right decision in shifting into this uh, for, for my job, for my career, because I found it to be uh, difficult that first day of training. So give yourself a little grace. If you don't catch it immediately, um, give yourself five solid scans, 10 solid scans, 20 solid scans, or call us, right? Call the manufacturing company or reseller that you bought it from and get that additional um, education to build confidence in your skill sets. So tonight, specifically, we're going to talk about indications for crowns, right? That's that's what we're focusing on. But know that uh, your TRIO scanner can really scan for everything today. So um, you're able to scan for crowns and bridges and veneers, as well as implants and uh, implant abutments and crowns. But not only that, uh, you know, we've We've been able to do orthodontic appliances as well as bruxism appliances for many, many years now, as well as sleep appliances, but um, moving into partials and dentures as well. And that's uh, been super exciting. And I hope you're able to join us for um, additional programs here in the series to cover that. And again, tonight we're talking specifically about trios. But know that as a laboratory group, we're very, very experienced in the ability to receive and accept scans from a multitude of scanners. So the, this is a few that I just put up on the slide. There are literally new scanners coming to the market like monthly. Uh, so I, I may not have every single one on there, but uh, we've got a wonderful internal technical team uh, to handle the scans files themselves and uh, have confidence in knowing that NDX is a well-versed laboratory when working with digital scans. So again, tonight we're talking about the three-shaped trios. I'm going to back up one second. So there are several different um, versions of the trios. Brenda specifically is going to be utilizing the trios five tonight. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what makes a great impression, right? Um, so the most important thing is that we can see what we're going to be scanning. And in order to see the prep of the tooth, we need a clear, dry field. And I, I sort of joke, and I put it up on the slide, is this is not ultrasound technology yet, right? So the scanner cannot look through fluid. It cannot look through uh, saliva or hemorrhaging that is occurring. So it's really important to have a clear, dry field. Um, acquiring the data completely is necessary. So in, in, we're, we'll identify where you can miss a little bit of information and it won't compromise the final result of the fit of your crown. Uh, but in most cases, you want 100% coverage of all the tooth surfaces in the um, operative scan, as well as all the occlusal surfaces in the opposing and an accurate bite registration. And the demonstration will um, give you some tips on best practices to acquire that beautiful bite registration that the lab so, so desperately wants and needs. Uh, and then lastly, it's how best to expose the margin, right? So we want a clear, dry field so we can see the prep. And once we see the prep, we need to be able to see your prep that has been prepared 360 degrees, right? So if there's a little bit, little tissue tag that is hung over or a little bit of a bleeder, we need some different tools and techniques in order to um, make that visible 
and make certain that your margin is fully exposed. Uh, as one of your handouts, we have an iOS uh, support piece that we created that some of the um, images and items that I'll discuss here in the PowerPoint are covered on this PDF as well. And a little bit about preparation. So it, it's important to know that scanners in general scan a chamfer or a shoulder preparation the best, right? So that that's the best type of scan to provide the laboratory. Um, the days of, you know, a disappearing feather or a disappearing knife edge just tucked subgingively are, is not an optimal preparation for intraoral scanning, for the camera to really be able to see. Um, it, just the, the name itself, right? A disappearing finish line or a feather, right? It means that it just gradually disappears. For intraoral scanning, we really need a definitive finish line that you can visually see 360 degrees. So how do we get there? How do we create that great isolation um, and, and be able to visibly see the teeth that we're scanning? So a, a couple different things that I like to recommend to new users. And again, that's what tonight is about is new users. Once you become proficient, I would say you don't necessarily need these uh, these devices or tools, um, except for the NeoDry dry angles. I'm always going to use that as a foundational piece. So let's talk about lips and cheeks first. So these three items, um, first up is ScanMate. So it's a tool uh, on a handle with a soft, uh, pliable head that allows you to retract the lips the cheeks and the tongue um, in a comfortable manner for the patient and it's non-reflective. So your metal mirrors can be reflective when scanning. And so you want to avoid anything that's metal um, to reduce the glare and reflection that you would find. Um, they're also autoclavable, so that's that's a plus with the scan mates. The Ottergate is a lip and cheek retractor. Many of you may have used those um, in different orthodontic um, practices as well, but it's disposable, so that that's uh, uh, an easy thing, right? And um, it's very comfortable for the patient. It can be a little cumbersome if you have the patient um, bite down, right? For the bite registration, it, it could potentially pop out. Uh, but knowing that ahead of time and holding it in place uh, is like one of the chair side coaching items that tips and tricks that we're able to provide to you. And then if you wanna go in a more green space, uh, the Comfort View is autoclavable. It's made by Premier. And um, it works very, very nicely as well and fairly comfortable for the patient also. And uh, the NeoDry dry angles is my favorite for controlling moisture. Um, it, you place it um, on the inside of the cheek against the parotid gland, and it really helps to control um, the saliva that can all of a sudden pull up and you're not really sure where it came from. But every time you're using the scanner and you're retracting the cheek, it sort of milks that gland and um, saliva shows up when you least want it to. Another best practice is um, really confirming that in your preparation, you have enough occlusal reduction. And although um, the TRIOS, as well as most all of the scanners on the market today, have tools built into the scanner on how to check and confirm that you have enough occlusal reduction based on the product, based on the material that you're selecting, whether it's zirconia or PFM or for, full cast gold. Um, I do highly recommend to people to confirm that you have that occlusal reduction before you ever take a PVS impression and before you ever take a digital impression. It's just, it takes seconds to check it. Um, and although you can fix it later, uh, it, it's, I 
I recommend this as a best practice. So, so how can you do that? You could do it with a bite tab. You could take a measurement, right? If you pull the ball burnisher through, um, you, you typically have about 1.5 millimeter of reduction that's needed. You could have the patient bite into wax and measure that with calipers or even um, your provisional if you make the provisional prior to scanning, which I don't necessarily recommend. Um, on occasion, we have found uh, like almost like a little shell of the temporary material stuck on the prep itself. And then you have to start from scratch because it's not an accurate representation, of course, of what your prep was. Uh, but what's shown here on the screen is something called a prep check. I don't have stock in prep check. I wish I did, but uh, Discus makes it and uh, you have the patient bite into it it leaves a marking, sort of like um, articulating paper where you wouldn't have that 1.5 millimeter of reduction. This is an example of, of a, uh, a clear, clean, exposed margin on, on the prep itself which we, that's that's our goal, right? So that part is optimal. This was uh, done with retraction cord. Um, and I do want to also mention, right? Like this is the time to also take advantage of cleaning up, right? Any um, interproximal contacts that could be uh, just made a little smoother, a little better. So what are some additional ways to retract that gingival tissue? So I am all about uh, retraction cord and I like a dual cord technique. Lasers can work uh, very successfully. I'm not a fan of rotary curatage where one will take a burr and just sort of remove the tissue around the prep itself. I find that it really causes a lot of hemorrhaging that can be difficult to control before you start to scan. Excuse me. Similarly, uh, if an electrosurge can, not that it causes bleeding, of course, right? It's cauterizing the tissue, but it creates um, almost like little, little mountains of tissue is what it looks like on the scanner screen. And it can be difficult to get the light um, around those little tissue tags. And then uh, recently I've utilized a technique where with, with uh, an assistant that took the bite material like uh, blue mousse, put it inside of the temp and had the patient bite into it. And it actually retracted the tissue quite well. Uh, for double cord technique, will the margin be captured if one cord is left in? Yes. So typically the margin is captured nicely for that. So we'll use um, a double cord technique. Get to my next. Oh. I think I skipped some there. Sorry about that. Um, so I like the double cord technique where a double or triple zero is placed first, followed by perhaps a one or a number two. It really depends upon what the tissue can accept, right? What the tissue can take. That just happens to be my favorite cord packer. It's a Fisher cord packer um, and the hemostatic agent that uh, I have found to be favorable is Viscostat and that is through Ultradent. So when you're using the double cord technique, you're going to place the cord. You might have the patient bite into a, a compra cap, which you see here. You can also um, combine it with the use of retraction paste and uh, have them bite for, I don't know, two to five minutes typically. When you you go to remove the cord, you wanna put just a drop of water um, on the site before removing the cord. And the reason for that is that the, the a little bit of moisture is a good thing at that point. It prevents, um, it prevents the scab, right? Like, like from uh, beginning to hemorrhage again. Uh, when you're removing that top cord. Of course, visually confirm that the first cord placed is not 
impeding upon the view of that margin 360 degrees. I apologize. I'm having an issue with my arrow button here. There we go. So here's the physical example, right? So retraction cord number one is placed to expose the margin. This is also reviewing it in monochrome, color and monochrome. and then color and monochrome. And this is something that I know Brenda is gonna discuss as well, but from a lab's perspective, it's really important to us that you review and confirm that you can see your margin 360 degrees in that stone model mode or monochrome mode, um, because that is truly how the dental laboratory is going to be seeing it and using it to design the crown. We see the color version as well. And I know that's typically most comfortable for the clinical staff, right? That's what we're accustomed to seeing every day is to structure and gingival tissue. Um, but it's important to make sure that you still see and experience that same clarity uh, in the monochrome. So a little bit specific to trios. Uh, on the mandibular arch, you're always going to scan in an occlusal lingual buckle scan path strategy. Got a short little video here. So we've got all the occlusals. Now we're rotating through lingually. And we're going to finish up on the buckle. This is an example of hand positioning. Again, we're working with the basics tonight. And this I believe is a trio three here in the video. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's what I did at the university. Now, oppositely on the maxillary arch, we're going to do a clusal buccal lingual. And the scan paths are important, right? Some, uh, I hear... Some people uh, make statements that, oh, you know, it's not really important what direction you go or where you start. And uh, I feel very strongly that the manufacturing companies of all the different scanners out there, they, I mean, they're, they're, they have professional research and development teams. And those R&D engineers have, have created scan path strategies for a reason. And so we we at NDX do our very best to reiterate and and um, confirm their messaging to our dentist customers as well. So this is going to be the scan for the upper. And Brenda, I know you're going to address it when you do your live demo, but when you come to the midline, do you always continue to go forward or do you ever stop and then address it from the distal? They, well, I usually do one pass. Okay. Um, however, to begin with, 
it's awkward because you don't have that muscle memory yet. So um, I suggest to begin with, come to the midline, take it out, start on the occlusal on the other side, then roll it to the buckle. Got it. Until you get that muscle memory. Muscle yeah. memory is a, a very difficult thing to get if you don't have the practice. That's very true. Very true. And we encourage people to practice, whether you're practicing on each other in the office or even to build that muscle memory if you're using just a stone model that's in the office. And, and it takes, you know, five or 10 minutes. And if you are a new user and you can devote, I don't know, even 10 minutes every three days um, to begin to build that muscle memory and that hand-eye coordination with the scanner itself, um, I think it's it's really advantageous for you. I've got a question here. We just got a scanner. Do I need to scan the entire arch for a single tooth or just a quadrant? Great answer, or great question rather. And the answer is a quadrant will typically be sufficient for a single unit crown. Now, if it's um, if it's an implant case, I would say no. We we want a full arch scan for that. Um, but if it's a single unit crown and the occlusion of your patient is is solid, then a quadrant is good. If they're in a crossbite or something is unusual about their occlusion, or maybe they've got some mixed dentition, then I would recommend a full arch. Um, but otherwise, a quadrant is pretty straightforward. can see the difference in the prep itself, right? Right, just the overall clarity. I want to be able to see that margin 360 degrees. So in color, looks looks pretty good, right? And then we shift it to uh, the monochrome and it's not as clear. And you can see where that's been identified there in the arrow. And I'll just go back and forth one more time. So color looks pretty clear. And look, even the retention grooves, you know, like if you can see them in the color, um, but boy, it becomes more crisp in the monochrome. And the clearer part of the margin is really nice and clear. But right here, interproximally, we're just sort of missing the mark a bit. A nice solid bite registration. And part of the um, key in uh, acquiring the, the imagery altogether is that you're capturing a good two to four millimeters of gingival tissue above or below the CEJ, right? So you want to make sure that you're capturing that gingival tissue on the buckle. Brenda, I think you're gonna cover a little bit tonight like path of insertion. And then we're almost done here with the PowerPoint. So just know that the TRIOS allows you to scan for many different things, right? Not just single unit crowns that we're talking about today but uh, implant crowns and uh, removables now, and it has the ability to take shade as well. Uh, it, we're not using the TRIOS 3 tonight, but for anybody that um, still has uh, an, a older version than the TRIOS 5, please uh, know that there are two different types of tips that come with your device. The silver tip is the actual scanning tip, and it has the mirror inside of it the gray tip, and I know they're very similar in look. Um, so that's why we like to call attention to, to this in our presentation. But the gray one is your protective safety tip. And it has like a clear bubble, almost like a, a marble on the inside of it. You never want to autoclave the safety tip. It will melt. And then with the... Um, 
versions earlier than the TRIOS 5, uh, please be certain to follow your calibration uh, recommendations, both for color and for regular usage. And then this is an example of what the tips look like for the TRIOS 5. And again, you can scan for really everything today. Any, any remove, any, any processes that you would send an impression to the lab to have fabricated, you can now take a digital impression for. So super exciting. I mean, lots, lots and lots of changes and gosh, the last 15, 17 years since I've been involved with um, intraoral scanning. I will stop sharing now to allow Brenda an opportunity to uh, do the demonstration, and then we'll come back up for some next steps. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Brenda. So I am, first I'm going to start off with sharing my screen with the, the trios here. Let's see if I have this. Can everybody see it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I'm going to go over like when you first see it, what I, where to go to choose a lab, how to um, even contact us as a lab or trios if you need them to team view into your, your computer. Um, what's great about having an iOS team for NDX is if that patient's in the chair and you're not quite sure if you've captured all the data that you really need, um, you can call us and we can team view into your scanner and look at the prep and let you know if there is tissue in the way or if it's a yay or an A <laughs> and what you may have to do to then get back out. So this question mark here is will take you to the screen and the remote access will have for the team view. And then you'll have a code and it may not let me bring this one up since I'm already team viewing into my trios. Um, if you needed a contact support for the three shape team and there's training videos, you can click there, you can ask your question. So anything that you may have about um, how to scan for an implant or um, how you would put that into your notes, it will let you know there. Um, master scanning. So it's there's a plethora of different classes that you can do. Put this down. I go over to this one and minimize that. Um, the user manual safety guides. So in the scanner, there are settings for the sound. So you're going to go on, want to go to trios. And then it'll be the system setting, scan setting. And if you bring that up, you can schedule, put your shade measurement system that you might use in here. You can customize it. Um, and there is a whole closed color. So if you're missing some data that the scanner can fill it in because it's not too big, you can choose your whole color. I like green. I know that... Um, I know Kelly has ran into people that said, well, you know, if the patient has eaten lettuce or asparagus, it might be green caught in between the teeth and there's nothing that is in the cyan. So you can change the color. Um, I don't do red because, or even yellow because on the, the tool for the path of insertion, red will show undercuts or if you have a high bite. Um, blue will show if you're missing data to take a shade measurement with the trios. So 
but me, I'm used to, I've, since trios three, I've been doing green. Um, so that's what I usually use. Um, you can then, Brenda, excuse me. We, we yes. just had a question in regards to um, settings and AI. And is there a recommendation to have it on or off? And if so, when? You always want to try it with the a, uh, AI on. That way, if your finger's in the way, you don't have to cut that out. Um, with three shape, a lot of times you can capture a lot with the AI on. Um, let's say if you have a large edentulous area that for some reason it is not capturing it, during the scanning portion, you can turn that off. So I always like to try it first on, but in this setting, always have it on. Got um, it. And then, you know, it has the sound, the cursor sensitivity. Um, I have it turned down because it is kind of loud, especially when we're doing a webinar. I don't want to break everybody's eardrums <laughs> for this. Um, and it is very important too when, if this is a new thing for a patient to have done, it sounds like a Geiger counter. And I always- Or a machine gun, I think it sounds like. Or a machine gun, everybody does. I've never heard a machine gun, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, at the at the university we couldn't have some of the <laughs> ones. Everybody but duck, no. Yeah. Um, but I always let them know that it is a camera, and we are not using any radiation. And yeah, good point. That way, it doesn't frighten them. So you can change your little sound. So if you wanted a pin drop. I like soft drop. So then it will have like your orientation flip for upper jaw. I usually don't change any of that. Um, and then your cutout diameters. We have it set for the implant, like a six millimeter. And I will show when we're scanning what that, well, I'll show you that when you are looking at the implant um, webinar <laughs> yeah. that will show you the sizes and um, your pre prep cutout. And then your scanner management. If you have a cordless some, or wireless, sometimes it won't, it disconnects. So you may have to come in here and reselect it so it pairs together. And now I'm going to go into this area. How do you get to a lab to choose your labs that you want? You go to the store and you can also find um, different practice management, Strawman Group, Henry Schein, Ivo Klar. But right now I want to find a lab. So I'm going to put over here NDX Green. I'm just pulling any out. But if I just want NDX, for all NDX labs, it will come up. And I have some of these installed already, but I'll just say, okay, just plain NDX. I don't know where that one would go. And then you can say, hello, and connect. And when it approves it, then it will show up on your lab selection list. But if you wanted to find a lab that does clear aligners, you can find that also. So that's pretty easy. Just go in and start playing around in your three shape connect there, the store. I, I would um, also recommend to people that the very first time you're connecting to a lab, it's not a bad idea to telephone them as well and say, hey, I'm, I'm adding you to my trio scanner and I just want to make sure that you received the request. Um, and, and, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time we, we do, but it's not <laughs> like somebody sitting there in front of their computer waiting for a request to come right. through. It's sort of like they're intermittently checking emails throughout the day. So, um, that, that's important to do as well. Yeah. So right now we're going to set up a patient and 
you can always search for your patient first to see if they are in there and if they are, well, I'm just gonna, I know I have a test patient in here. Then you could click on test and then add a new case. Um, right now, we're gonna do a new patient because I want to walk you through how to put that and what it looks like. Um, if you have a system that you, your charting system is with a patient ID, you can put that there. I am gonna put Brenda on here. Patient's last name and you want a date of birth. And I'm just going to put a random date <laughs> here. I don't know why it's, oh, it's kind of slow. Okay, so here for the email is the patient's email. Um, I don't know many patients that really want their scan sent to them. But I know that some offices, they want the patient's email here. And for the note, the notes is something that the patient will not see. So if this patient was a gagger, um, you can put patients a gagger, um, allergic to latex. So um, you could add your notes there. And now you can select the lab that you chose, or if you're doing a status scan, treatment simulator, simulator, smile design, model maker. Um, but a lot of times if you work with different labs, this area can get really boggled up. Um, you can rearrange. And if you wanted perhaps all your NDX labs in a group, then you can go in and you can name your group. Or if you use certain ones for ortho, it could be your ortho lab. I'm gonna exit out of there. So really cool. I like that. I like that too. And then is that um, new? It is new. Like it, it's a newer feature, right? It yeah. is a newer feature before you had to scroll down trying to find which lab. So um, we're going to do, like I said, our new case. I'm going to choose my lab. And it opens the case. And what I love to have about the helpful hints, even if you have scanned many, many, many times before, and you know this, like the back of your hand, um, the other assistant may not, the doctor may not. Um, you could put- you get a new team member. A new right. team member. Um, however, we get so busy in a dental office um, and we have so much background noise. I like this because it centers me. It It's like, my little ohm, right? <laughs> so then I can just go through it real quick if I wanted to. But to begin with, this is really great. It is your, you know, like I know like most people when they get instructions, they throw it away, but this is your instructions in your box, right? Um, and they'll tell you how to make a bridge restoration. If, um, if, if one of our um, attendees goes to look for this on their scanner and somebody's already selected the do not show again. Is there a way to turn that back on? Yes. Um, back into the information. Back in information. Okay. Right. So that letter I up here in the right underneath the question mark is information, you know, I for information. So yeah. then you can bring it up and it can stay. So um, what are we doing today? So we're going to talk about single unit restore restorations right now, single unit crown. I'm going to hit single unit and it's going to be a crown on a preparation. 
And after you select that, then you're going to select the tooth. And I am working with number three today. And then we're going to go down here and select our material. We're going to say a zirconia monolithic. And you can put your shade here. And then if you wanted to use the trios to select your shade to guide you, you can do that too. Um, and I'll show you that later, but I want to select the shade right now. And we're going to save that. Um, always choose your delivery date. Um, we're going to say two weeks right now. I need to move this down. So on this side, you can see, okay, patient's name, what we're doing. If you accidentally chose the wrong tooth, you can delete it and start all over. And right here is additional scans. So if you have a tooth that is that hasn't been broken down and or crown that you love the looks of it, the shape, the form of it, then you're going to want to take up a, um, a pre-op scan, right? I like to say, think of this like you're doing analog. So if you liked a case, a crown or a tooth that was perfect and you want the lab to mimic that, this is where you would then choose your pre-prep and use that for a scan. And you can add case instructions here. I like to please fab, fabricate full zirconia crown number three. And if you have different dentists in your practice, it's very important for them to add their name here, especially if they don't have their own three shape account um, and along with their phone number. So if we as a lab need to contact you, we don't call Dr. Jones, who might be in a different office. Yes. And Dr. Jones says, I don't know that patient. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so now we're going to go to scanning. I like to follow the arrows to begin with. So now we're going to go to next. And what's great with a lot of like the trios is you can do remote button. I'm not good at that because I did not grow up with Wii or video games. Um, but you can see how you can use it by pointing at the screen to go to different pages, um, different steps. And you would need to play around with that. Um, I know that I have to start like for my own, my own personal challenge. That's what I want to learn next. <laughs> How about you, Kelly? <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready to take that on. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now, I am going to um, share the screen of me scanning the lower. And I know that Kelly showed on there, but I have my camera set up. So I'm going to come over here. I'm gonna stop sharing that one. I'm going to bring, I'm going to share another screen here. Okay, so with the Trios 5, it comes with this tip. That's the one that you want to keep on on your scanner wand when you're not using it. And you just pull it off. And here is the scanning tip. Just put that on. Make sure it's seated all the way. And... I don't know if you can see that. Do you see where that's flashing green? Yes. That means the scanner is now ready. Um, let me see here if that. Okay. 
So I don't care what side you start on. If you start from um, right to left on a patient, if you do right to left, then you're going to want to do right to left on the opposing arch. Um, you don't want to go right to left and then left to right. Because sometimes when you're trying to manipulate that bite to get together, it can sometimes um, throw the system for a loop and you might get two arches that look like an S, a backwards S. So what you're gonna wanna do is place it in and with, with the trios that you hover just a couple millimeters above the tooth, the teeth here, just. And when you come to the anterior, you just rock it a little bit. Come all the way back. Lingual. Buckle. I find it easier to scan in a patient's mouth, but on this angle, you go right from around and then all the way, and then you stop. Brenda, for the new users, is there a particular recommendation of facing the patient being more at like a nine o'clock position or can you can you stand behind the patient as well? You can I, I prefer to sit all the time, but you can stay you can stand. Um I'm either how I like to position myself is I'm either at eleven or if I'm gonna be on the other side, I'm at one or two. Two o'clock. Um, I usually like to, when I'm scanning, I use my finger and then my thumb like to retract. And I kind of use this as my fulcrum Great. to hold tissues back, you know, like the tissue and the cheek and pull and just guide if you can see. Yep. And that way it keeps it stable. Um, I also say to begin with, um, scan yourself because you cannot look in your own mouth. And I know with the trios, they say you listen more to the sound. I, I find that if I'm looking at the screen, at least I know I am at my right distance. And if for some reason it quit capturing, I know exactly where I'm at. So I don't have to, um, look at the screen, you know, like find the screen. Okay. Where am I at? Where did it fall off? If that makes sense. Um, the data. So right now I'm going to stop my camera and then I'm going to go back for the trios. But to begin with, for all you new users until you can get that nice, um, you know, muscle memory when you're going to come, it's, it's more like a you. Um, we like to try to follow an arch you don't want to do that it's just i don't know if you can see this it's you're coming out kind of over but with a little rock and back all the way to around the lingual you and actually you need to be closer to the base of the of the trails yeah there you go there you go and then so when you come around come to the midline come out then let the trios find the occlusal, then roll to the buckle and back to the midline okay. um, until you can get that muscle memory down. And I'm going to set it on its little cradle. I'm going to stop sharing the screen and go back to the trio screen. Okay. So the green is areas that I am missing data. This big hole, I really don't like. I would go, I'm going to go in and fill that back in. So green is areas that you didn't capture it quite well enough, but trios can recognize that they can fill in that hole. So it's less than um, four millimeters. So in this little area, I'm just going to come back in 
And if you need to come in, you're going to start on an occlusal, roll it to the area that you need to capture, and then you can stop it. Um, for a full arch, you want to keep it 1500 or lower for like one arch. Um, if you for your images, right? For your for images, the right. So if you if this number starts getting too high, um, at three thousand, it's you might as well just you know clear your scan and start all over again. Um, I'm going to go into some a couple little tools here, really fast because um, another thing that's really unique with yeah. So if you accidentally scan the wrong arch. You can swap your scans. So you can swap your upper and your lower. Yeah. Um, so now I am going to go to the upper. I'm going to scan that real quick. And I am going to scan it with my both cords in. And then remember to the buckle. And then the lingual. Okay, it's gonna have us mark the tooth because it wants us to know which tooth that we are doing. Put your dot in the center of the tooth as much as possible, then click done. Now, what I'm going to do is, because I have, we're gonna pretend we have the cord in, I am going to trim that area out. You can make it larger so you can see it. Um, and then I'm just going to, I have a mouse, so I'm gonna just go all the way around remove the tissue from that area. I'm gonna put, press done. I am gonna pull the cord, make sure um, there's no debris, um, no saliva, make sure it's nice and dry. Now I'm gonna come back in to the prep. I'm gonna turn my scanner on. And then I am going to capture all that data. And then when I come in to get my interproximals, I don't know if you can see, I am coming in more from the cheek area so I can capture. And then once I have that, I'm going to turn it off. And this little... If your, if your margin was like really deep, would you use um, Zoom or the uh, high definition, the HD photo on that? Um, HD photo takes a picture um, of it and that will not show. It's a, it's a, it's a still photo. It's a still photo. So yes. So if you have a deep area, you can then zoom into that area when you go scan see how i selected an area so if there was missing data um or a deep area it allows you to go in and then so i'm going to turn it on right there and it turns into stone so you can yeah, with greater concentrating in the area. Yeah, so yeah. it does, but still every scanner has their limitations on their depth of the um, photo. Sure. Scan. So um, this will usually show where your, it says two places with possible missing scan data. That is not gonna change the it's integrity of the crown that's being made, right? Um, mm -hmm. So before I ever go further than this, I like to evaluate my scan, my prep to make sure I can see a nice 
clean margin. I can see all the way around. I like to look at it almost like a PBS impression mm -hmm. and make sure that I have all my data there. Everything looks great there. Now I am going to go to the bite. And here it's very important to have the patient sitting up a little bit. And I have, especially if they're numb and a lower because um, laying back for about 45 minutes to an hour um, and being numb, patients always have a problem saying, um, I guess we have an upgraded toolbar. We'll worry about that part later. Um, so I have the patient open, close, open, close, open, close. And then I tell the patient, that's the bite I want you to mimic when I get this in. Then I will have the patient open. I retract it with their, the cheek with the scanning wand. And even if you've prepped number two, and 30, you don't have to go that far back. Um, these scanners, they they do hurt if they if you jab them back there. And a lot of times the patient will then open or they'll switch their bite to the improper bite. So all you have to do is get like the first molar. I usually like to come to the cuspid, um, even if the scanning you know, like the, you're going to hear like a music saying that the bite is, has come together. I still like to go a little bit. So as you heard that, um, but I scan in a, like a little tiny rectangle. So if you like the bite on that side, then you want to go to bite two. And you do the same thing, open, close, turn it on. It usually comes much quicker on the second bite. And here you're gonna evaluate it. And I like to have a mouse. Um, everything looks good here. Um, you can check your uh, clearance here. I usually like to do it um, after I post-process. So I'm gonna post-process. And if, if you've taken a long time scanning, this post-processing will take, it can take a while. So, you know, kind of be patient and and full arch, full arch scans always take a little longer than yes. quadrant. Right. So, um, and I know that there was a question, do you usually do a full mouth scan for a single crown? I, as an assistant, it's like whatever my doctor normally would do. If he usually does quadrants, I would do a quadrant. And, um, but yes, for implants or large bridges, you want to have a good bite for you know, a stable bite for your bridge. So this section here, let's see. there is this tool called direction. So this will show if you have undercuts, you can auto detect it. And if you saw on this prep of this tooth, it's showing that the contact's really not broken. Or if you look at it this way, you can't read your margin all the way around. So um, if you have that, then you need to adjust it and then you can go back, cut that area out, scan it again. Now, sometimes if it shows a little red on a mesial or distal wall, let's say, um, 
and and it's a small amount. Um, typically, the lab can block that out. So right. I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend reprepping and rescanning for that. But yeah, but this is one you can see that. Yeah, that crown's yep. not going to fit in very well. <laughs> You're going to be, they're going to spend time adjusting, trying to get it to see. Um, so for the shade guide, it will tell you, um, I usually like to, you don't want to have the tooth so dried out and not be able to have a proper shade representation at that time. Um, but this will go through all the little tools that are walking. The blue that I was talking about earlier about if you are missing data. So the blue will show there's not enough data there to get a proper shade. However, the tooth in front of it that we probably want to match does, right? So we're going to add a shade. And you just click on it. And it's as you see, you can scroll and it will give you different shades. You can add an extra shade. And then it will show, but I think with the new one here, let me get back on to that. We're going to do the occlusal gram. And this will show if you have an area that you need it to reduce more on your prep. Prep looks pretty good, right? It's it's not in the red. And on the side bar here, it shows like how much reduction you can you can change that. This is what Kelly was talking about that the occlusal gram shows what material you selected. So if it is an Emacs, it would be probably more that you would need reduced. And if you um, did PFM, different reduction, right? Yep. So if you ever wanted to center it to look at it more, you can scroll that around. There's a snapshot. So with the shade, you could take a snapshot and then it will show up on your lab slip, which would be back in the beginning part of it. Right. Um, and then, then the area where it shows the two people, the red person and the blue person with, with an envelope, that's how you send it to the lab. And you would click that and then it would ask you again at the bottom, are you sure? that you want to send and then you click send. Perfect. Well, thank you. Great demonstration.